I would say, actually, if I look at it generally in terms of even Uganda, Kampala is just, Kampala may be a bit better, but generally, Uganda, the uptake of especially clean cookstoves, we all know the dangers. What, and there's been a lot of write up about the dangers of how we are cooking globally and ETC. And you realize, like in our country, uptake of like moving away from our traditional ways of cooking is really, really slow. But we know that. Uh, for Uganda, over 90% of the population relies on biomass to cook. So definitely the use of charcoal, the use of firewood is not going to go away anytime soon. And we can't say that you're going to have people electrified throughout the whole country. Yeah, the urban, urban areas like Kampala have a bigger, uh, a bit more electrified than rural areas. And yeah, there's use of gas and mostly gas, but still you realize more and more people are still using, I would say, biomass. And in the urban areas like Kampala, <coughs> charcoal use really stands out because one, you know, in the urban areas, people want to be able to cook without overly attending to their food. So you find uh, charcoal use still stands out and it's easily available, it's easily accessible. So why should I try to get and gas? Like, okay, let's look at the peri urban areas. You find not many people are using gas. Maybe the middle income earners will use gas, but you still find charcoal use is still like what they use more often. They'll use gas for just some basic meals or fast meals, or they want to prepare tea or whatever. But mostly during the day, the people they live at home will use the charcoal. And gas is like, um, what should I call it? Backup. A backup, exactly. So, as in the use of charcoal still really stands out. You still find people will still use, they'll, they'll prefer the, the cheaper options. If I can get, I don't know whether you've seen these metallic charcoal stores. Yes. They are easily accessible anyway. It's like you just walk out. And you and you can buy it from a store nearby, and just about anyone can actually make it as long as they have some uh, metallurgy skills. I don't know whether that's what it's called. And also these days, a lot of people, especially women groups, are making it's like some kind of small conical stove. It doesn't last long. Maybe it will last you three months to six months, depending. It's a really small stove. But it's it serves. You find they put a very big saucepan on top of it, but it's a charcoal stove, and they can use it. And for them, it's not about uh, how long it's going to last. It's affordable at that point because most times you'll find they are, they range from let's say three thousand shillings, Uganda shillings, to five thousand Uganda shillings. So it's a cheap alternative, and it will get my food cooked. And uh, maybe a bit saving. So why should I buy a much better stove? Like, okay, right now we have local manufacturers that are trying to really do stoves that will last longer. You've seen the ceramic liners, line stoves with a metallic cover. Those can cost from let's say twenty five thousand to thirty five, depending on where you're buying and what size of stove you're buying. Even people like, I would know the danger, mm -hmm. but I'm like, ah, I don't have 25,000 right now. Let me just buy this one. I can always keep buying every six months. So it's a matter of convenience as well. Exactly. One of the key things, like if you're to promote ICS, especially the improved cook stores, mm -hmm. the key thing to bring out is to show people that you, you okay, this is the upfront cost, but eventually you're going to save, let's say, so much uh, fuel or money actually money when you say fuel no people won't understand when you talk about it in terms of okay you, you're spending 70,000 shillings on a sack of charcoal maybe you'll be using uh, half a bag half a bag of charcoal maybe that will sink in more but otherwise if you talk about emissions I don't know what uh, it doesn't ring a bell easily so what we've seen like also one um, if I forget, 
the charcoal most times you find uh, the cooking and, and cultural pro, uh, practices that we have like let's say Kampala I would say it's more of the central region uh, Uganda most people like cooking matoke and there's no way I will cook my matoke on gas it would be really expensive I want it to seem might take a long time to cook so you can't convince me, unless I'm cooking this first, first one, you can't convince me to actually cook it on gas. I would prefer something I can, like, you know, with charcoal, you can even put ash, then you leave it to cook for longer, so which like you can't slow, do. It's like a slow cooker. Exactly, right? you can make it a slow cooker, which you can't really do on electricity. Yeah. You're worried about the cost, and which you can't really do on gas. I know you can turn it down, but still, okay. but still it won't do that job. And there's always this belief of, uh, um, I don't know, but uh, something to do with the heat transfer may not be so good, so my food won't turn out like the aroma won't be so good. So there's all that belief. Yet, yes, we are yet to prove scientifically whether it's true, but some of those things you can't prove. It's already a perception and trying to change that is not going to be easy. So there are all those small, small things. Sometimes it's more of maybe how you've grown up or perceptions or cultural beliefs that really hinder the uptake of these things. I think teaching, awareness, and also getting the manufacturers on board, not to just do things business as usual, but try to be innovative in your distribution models if you're finding people are finding challenges in terms of uh, financing come up with creative <coughs> financing models and also improving the product because truthfully right now what you have on the market especially locally you find the biggest percentage maybe not all it's basically the same thing uh, you know demonstrations do a lot to get people to do stuff there's a time uh, Creek was promoting what they call a motor store. It's a gasifier kind of store, and the first prototypes were kind of long, so they took it out into the field. And one of the comments they got, I can't mingle my portion this thing because it was kind of long and unstable. So if you don't do the user, you know that uh, design process of understanding what does the it's user want yeah. exactly? And then you incorporate that in your design, which most of, let's say, our producers are yet to clearly understand. Uh, it's more of, ah, I've seen this thing, I can actually replic replicate it and produce something. So you don't have that interactive process with the users to understand what to do to develop a really good product.